uh, what do you call it? ultimate professional uh, network and uh, i would keep preaching linkedin again and again and again but let's play another game so that i don't be any uh, too much boring and like a talking head all the time and just keep talking and talking and talking let me give you one of the tools over linkedin uh i shared let me share here a link go to that link it's called linkedin social selling index if you go to that link that i just shared in the in the chat uh you would go to LinkedIn. it's a free tool by linkedin go to that page and you would find a button that says get your free score what this tool does is that it analyzes your linkedin overall performance in terms of your account your content your network the overall performance of, our, of your linkedin account and it gives you a score out of zero to hundred so please number one could go to that tool click on get your score and share with us here your score that you have got out of that tool over the chat uh i would i would stop here for just one minute for you all to go there check that tool get your scores and uh just uh, let me know ahmed hassan is top uh two percent congratulations hassan you are doing a uh, great job but what's the overall score how much did you get out of 100 the, the circle how much is it out of 100 uh that's what i need to just quickly see how well are we performing currently over linkedin so Afafi is 72. Congratulations. Ahmed is 66. That's a good job, guys. Yani, anyone above 60, that's a professional, decent usage over uh, LinkedIn. Maybe Afafi is a little bit uh, more active. 72 is a good score. Anyone else? Who is the LinkedIn superstar in our webinar today? I'm just wondering if uh, anyone else got another score. Uh, please share it with us because it's interesting always to measure our performance over social media. Sometimes we, we have a trick and it's a, it's a problem that we just uh, rely on the number of fans, the number of followers, the number of our network, and that's the only indicator that we rely on. And this is unfortunately a fake indicator. If just the number of fans or followers is the indicator, then uh, I would say how many of them are active? How many of them are really engaged with your content? If you have, for example, you have 100 uh, followers over Twitter, how many of these 100, they really engage with you? How many of them, they really uh, retweet your content? How many of them talk to you? So the number, only the number of fans or followers, just as a number, standalone number, it does not indicate anything. Uh, the interactivity, the engagement, the interaction with your content, is more important. Maybe I have a network of less people instead of 100, for example, theoretically. If I have a network of 100 people who do not engage with my content, then it's useless. But if I have a network of like 50, 60 people who are always talking with me, sharing my content, retweeting and commenting on my posts over LinkedIn, then that's more interesting. So please, uh, once again, um, uh, all of you, if you are interested, to just check how is it going please just uh, go to that tool and send us or share with us here your score over linkedin by the way in my previous online trainings uh, most of the people were shy because they got a low score some people got like a two out of 100 five out of 100 just cross this barrier and just share it whatever it is because no one's perfect if you have just got five out of 100 then that means that you can still do a great great job there is uh, some effort waiting for you so if it's a small number or big number I would highly invite you to share it. Haider is 55, which is a good job, uh, Haider. Uh, slightly, a little bit more steps. So that really, again, the idea here is uh, bringing a decent account that people would really perceive as an expert, people would engage with, people would love to uh, go back and visit this account, and people would see this account as the expert uh, where they can learn from or they can contract to do some freelancing work with them they can get back to him as the expert for uh, recommending some tools or being the consultant helping them to solve some business problems that uh, that they do and i agree with you uh, i have 100 is most important uh, out of this because uh, linkedin the the social selling score is based on four elements uh, one of the most important elements is really building uh, engaging and real relationships again if i have thousand people connected with me over linkedin and they just keep posting posting and no one 
talks with me, comments on my posts or shares my posts, then it's useless. Or just these people keep liking what I post, just click, 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 like, then that's that's useless. That's why LinkedIn Social Index, it, uh, it ca calculates also uh, the quality of your network and the quality of your engagement, how, how far are you connected to a good number of irrelevant people. Maybe I'm a digital marketing expert, but most of the people that I have are uh, people who work in accounting or in oil and gas industry, then it's a good network in an irrelevant uh, industry. So, so that's what LinkedIn measures, not only the quantity, but also the quality, a good number of people relevant to your expertise. So uh, I agree with you. Yeah. So that's the LinkedIn social selling and a few advices here and a few uh, last advices over LinkedIn. Um, that I really learned myself here. So one, again, the profile. The profile is your magnet. Because I think if you are active over LinkedIn, maybe we see tens of profiles over LinkedIn every day. But a really catchy profile is the one that we would stay on that profile, check the skills of that person, go through the content of that person, talk with that person, etc. But if it's the very traditional normal profile that we see, then we just flip the timeline and check other content and other profiles. What I mean here is five elements about the profile. Number one, again and again, and moreover is the profile picture. Because many people, they just mix between their uh, private usage or personal usage over social media, especially Facebook and Instagram. And they mix it with the professional usage, especially over LinkedIn and then Twitter. So avoid, let's say, uh, casual images while drinking some cool drinks on the beach. This might be like a profile picture for Instagram or maybe Facebook. But over LinkedIn, you need to be uh, a little bit of professional, decent uh, looking professional image. And moreover, again and again, the cover image. So uh, if you can see the slide here, this is my own LinkedIn profile where over the uh, cover image, you can see that the cover image summarizes what this account is about. This person, which is Fadi Ramzi, is an expert in digital marketing. And this person uh, teaches uh, online journalism. And then what's in it for me, always uh, keep in mind the call to action. OK, if you just visit that profile, OK, what, I, what can I do here? The profile says, join me on Facebook Live for social media tips every Monday at 10 PM Cairo time. So in a very, very quick in a nutshell, if I uh, don't know what this Fadi Ramsey is about from the, the cover image, I knew that he's an expert. He has been featured over BBC, over Sky News, Arabia, over uh, uh, Entrepreneur, Arabi. So this guy is an expert and seems that he's a good expert because he was featured in an international media. And how can I benefit from this account or from this uh, gentleman? I can learn from him or discuss with him some best practices over social media every Monday at 10 p.m. on um, Cairo time. So the whole story, I just summarized it uh, here on LinkedIn. And that's my LinkedIn profile. If you just want to grab some bits and pieces here. Uh, OK, Muhammad uh, says, uh, OK, let me get back to the comments so that we, we don't miss anything. So Muhammad says, will you guys send the recording of this session? Uh, I have said in gold badge. I don't understand what's the, the relation. But uh, Muhammad says, we'll share it on YouTube channel. OK, so it will be shared. OK, at Fadi, the question here is, what's the importance of added value of a premium version in gold? That's a, an excellent question. Uh, LinkedIn it has several uh, perspectives. I would say, first of all, with the free version that most of us, uh, I always switch between the premium and the free. So last year I was on the premium and paid some uh, good amount of money. For a few months now I'm with the, on, on the free. With the premium, if you really have a good, let's say, fan base, like uh, more than 10,000 people, then the, the premium or the gold one would give you another um, additional options like the LinkedIn Sales Navigator, which is LinkedIn... Uh, software or LinkedIn feature that would help you sell more your services, whether as an individual or as a company where you can, let's say, manage your leads, qualify leads, prioritize them, create some opportunities for the leads. So it's more of a CRM, customer relationship management and leads generation platform embedded inside LinkedIn. If you are on a free version, you don't have access to LinkedIn sales navigator. If you are on the one of the premium plans, 
you get access to that platform. If you are not interested in social selling or selling some uh, something over LinkedIn, maybe that's not interesting to you. So it's not worth the investment on going on LinkedIn uh, premium profile. One of the other uh, features that I loved myself is that on the on the free version, you can check who visited your profile. But the free version gives you the last three or four people who visited your profile. With the paid version, whatever the plan is, you get to see all the people who visited your profile. You can see who visited your profile yesterday, uh, uh, a week ago, a month ago, a year ago. And that's quite important because sometimes people visit your profile, people outside of your network, people that you don't know. So always keep an eye on people that you do not know who visited your profile. I got some, some speaking opportunities because I saw that uh, uh, one of the event organizers in France, she visited my profile. Then I messaged her saying, thank you for visiting my profile. It's my pleasure uh, that you did this. Please let me know if there is anything that I can help you with. And then she replied, yes, uh, we are an international organization for accountants. And we are holding our, uh, that's a true story, by the way. We are holding, holding our annual conference this time in Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt. And we were uh, looking for uh, a speaker who can energize our, um, can give us some uh, tips how to energize our teams and how can we manage our teams in remote environments and, and work with them better. I see that you are an expert in social media, but I can see also that you are a founder of a startup. So I thought that you have that type of expertise. And then we talk together and then I was paid to go as a, a professional speaker in that uh, uh, conference in Sharm Sheikh. This true story, I, I keep repeating it. Why? Because I'm aware who visited my profile, whether from inside my network or sometimes from outside my network. Moreover, it tells you from where the, the people outside of your network arrived to your, uh, to your uh, profile which means that X person uh, came to your profile from a search. So someone did a search for digital marketing expert and then LinkedIn uh, brought your account, so that guy. Or maybe someone visited you from a, a profile of a friend. So yeah, I was visiting someone and one of the friends of this, someone is Fadi Ramzi, then people clicked. Or someone knew me from my interaction over LinkedIn groups, which is also quite interesting gold mine over LinkedIn. So I get to know who visited my profile. Am I connected to this person or not? And if not, how did this person get to know me? So the more you have these insights and you talk with these people, maybe the more you can grab some quick opportunities. I have said, uh, maybe she confirms the idea. I also build a lot of partnerships thanks to LinkedIn. It's really interesting and we need to know very well how to use it uh, professionally. LinkedIn, I, again, I love LinkedIn even with the simple uh, free account. And let me give you some, some more tips, getting back to, the, to my slides. So number one is the profile picture. Number two is the cover image, as you can see, uh, if you uh, drop a quick visit to my profile. Uh, number three comes the headline. And here's a trick. The more you invest in writing different variations of the keywords, the more you appear in the search results of LinkedIn. So if someone goes and searches for online marketing, and uh, um, uh, digital marketing, digital communications, maybe my account would pop up. Why? Because sometimes I used on the same heading, I used the word online marketing, I used the word digital, I used the word trainer, instructor. So I use diff a, a keyword and different synonyms. And here is another trick because maybe you are limited in the headline to write certain number of uh, keywords. But if you do that from mobile, Mobile, you can write more keywords rather than from the website. This is a, a hack that I learned myself. So choose really your three expertise. If you remember the three expertise that we wrote down over a piece of paper and try to work on these keywords and their synonyms in your headline to grab the attention of the people who arrive to your account as well as uh, capitalize on the search feature over LinkedIn. So. Is it online marketing or digital marketing? Is it online communications or digital communications? Is it trainer or consultant or instructor? So I used the keywords and their synonyms. That's why I get some good traffic from the LinkedIn uh, search. Then comes the about section, the section below that. And the about section is all about your expertise, your previous track record. If I just visit your profile, what's in it for me? How can this person, this profile 
help me. So you can write that I can help you through my online courses that teaches X, Y, and Z. I can help you with my expertise as a graphic designer that I can design, for example, some uh, uh, content for your social media. I can design flyers for your next event, or whatever. You just write down your expertise not your just success stories, but talking as if you're talking to your audience. Lastly comes the section of your experience. And the section of experience confirms what you said in the section of the about. So, for example, in the about section, if I say that I have, uh, let's say, experience as a social media consultant and trainer, and I do these courses, you can attend these courses, you can uh, 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 join me over Facebook Live every Monday, blah, blah, blah. And then in the expertise, if you see me uh, working as a, an accountant and doing uh, mathematics the last 10 years, then something's wrong. So what people should see in the about should be confirmed in your expertise. So if you check my profile, you see that I'm working as a trainer with Thomson Reuters. I teach online marketing and online journalism at the American University. So whatever I promised as a value that you can get out of this profile in the about section is confirmed by the skills and by, by the previous track record that you can see in the previous jobs and the current job that I work. So the, the it's a build up. The experience confirms the about. The about is the expertise that you can deliver to your audience, which is summarized in the headline and maybe also in the cover image and in, in a visual way over your uh, profile. Uh, so that's your profile. Comes next, lastly, okay, I did a super interesting profile with a visual uh, cover image, blah, 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 and that's quite interesting. That's like 30% or 20% of the job. The, the remaining 80% is the content and creating engagement over uh, from that content. So sharing your experience, you should be always perceived as the expert and you should be always on daily basis by growing your network. Uh, I always recommend that whenever you meet anyone in a professional context, just add them over LinkedIn. If you have a meeting uh, with a customer, uh, uh, you have a team meeting, you attend uh, like a webinar, a uh, training, whoever you meet, just send them an invitation. You say, it was nice meeting you today. It's a pleasure to have you in my LinkedIn network. Just a quick story. When I arrived in Rome, like 2007, as far as I remember, yeah, which is like 13 or 14 years from now, I just uh, found everyone in, in Rome just doing that whenever we are in a meeting, they end the meeting saying, okay, nice to see you. Ciao, arrivederci. We'll be connected over LinkedIn. And at that time, I had no idea what's LinkedIn. And always I got that uh, invitations in on my email uh, saying, Fulan uh, has invited you over LinkedIn. And I didn't care. But the moment I start capitalizing on this, I started adding people and accepting people to my network. It helped me grow my network. And once upon a time, I just saw a post uh, from one of the friends over my network saying, I'm looking for a country manager to our new branch for my company in Egypt. And I contacted that guy. And instead of being the country manager, I jumped in as a co-founder and co-creator. And I launched the company that I, I loved and I belonged for the last 10 or 11 years. So always connect on daily basis with the people you meet. And moreover, do not ever be shy to connect to people that you personally don't know. I have this habit of trying to connect uh, per day to at least 10 new people that I don't know. And just don't send a connection invitation out of the blue. Add always, uh, LinkedIn provides you the, the option of adding a message. So I always say, hello, um, this is Fadi Ramzi. I work in digital marketing uh, field. And I thought that connecting with you would be uh, useful for both of us. I really like your content. If, if that's true, if you follow someone, and you can see really it's useful to connect, just say that. Or sometimes I read an article over, let's say, Social Media Examiner or Social Media Today or whatever. I connect with the author of that article saying, you know what, thank you so much for this article. It really helped me. It added to my experience. And I just wanted to connect with you. It's a pleasure to have you in my LinkedIn network. So have this grow, this habit of growing your network on daily basis, on sharing high quality content on daily basis so that people perceive you as the expert, the go-to expert, and then moreover also using LinkedIn groups, talk to people, answer their questions, engage with people, engage with uh, people that you don't know. The more you focus on content, on building your network, on engaging with people in groups, the more yeah, I need, the, the, you can play magic and opportunities would come automatically. And I would recommend, and again, I would repeat, uh, options and opportunities would come automatically because people 
would love your answers over the groups. So uh, day after day, they would see you as that person who can understand their needs, their requirements. So they would contact you for, let's say, a quick project, a consultancy project, freelancing tasks that you can do, etc. Lastly, over LinkedIn, which is the speciality of LinkedIn, it's not available over other platforms, that you can write long form text or long form articles over LinkedIn. If you just go to LinkedIn, you can always have this option of writing a text post, uploading an image, a slide, or a video. And there is a, what's called write an article. If you click on that, then it opens an editor and you can write a long form article. And this uh, type is uh, what we call it uh, traffic magnet. If you practice writing articles like this one, I wrote several articles over LinkedIn related to personal branding. You can go and check them. And these articles got me some interesting traffic from people that I don't know outside of my network. My network shared this article across their networks. So it was like people reading the article, they like it, they comment on it, they share it with their network, and then someone from their network comes and reads the article. So it's like a snowball effect. And the more you can write and share expertise in long form articles, uh, the more opportunities you might be generating automatically uh, out of that. Uh, that's it. Uh, that's just very, very quick um, few tips that I have learned over the last uh, few years. Uh, lastly, I would uh, leave with you something if you would really love uh, this topic of personal branding and building your LinkedIn profile. You can check also my profile over uh, the platform of iMentor where you can find more talks and some uh, special courses about uh, social media for personal branding. So uh, this can help you a lot. Let me go through your questions now. So Haider is saying uh, uh, something in French that I didn't understand. Abdef is saying something about the power of LinkedIn. It's pretty really magic, and I, I I can't agree more. By far, LinkedIn can play magic for us, and it's time. If we have some more time staying at home, please invest that time to the maximum over LinkedIn. It is important to select people who you add yes for sure. to be added relevant. Uh, people to your network, uh, or else uh, it wouldn't be very useful to you, to you and for them. Uh, other, the other way around, yes, I always accept people even if I don't know them, because these people, they saw certain benefit or certain idea, certain reason for connecting to me. So I always accept strangers, unless these strangers, they look like a terrorist or something really fearful, I don't accept them. But uh, generally speaking, yes, I do accept uh, invitations from uh, strangers, either saying is uh, there groups on LinkedIn? Yes, if you go to LinkedIn, uh, either or LinkedIn. I'm you sorry, find... the first yes. have, uh, Michael open, please close it because we hear a lot of noise. Are you? Thank you. Are you? Please continue, Faith. I'm sorry. Shall we proceed? Yes. Okay, so uh, getting back to Hyder's question, if you just open LinkedIn on the top navigation, on the top uh, menu, you would find home, my network, jobs, messaging, notifications, me, and then work. If you click on work, there is a drop-down menu that would open that has an icon called groups. If you go to groups, you would find lots of groups of relevant uh, topics that you can join. And you can interact with people on daily basis. So uh, joining groups and investing some time on daily basis over groups, it's it's a gold mine. It's the easiest way to connect with other people and other people can connect with you and, and grow your network with the same professional people just like uh, yourself. Uh, so, Fedzi, sorry, I didn't hear the, your answer about uh, is it important to select uh, people for LinkedIn because... We receive every day like a lot of invitation from people, and even sometimes people just message you to they think Facebook. So, is it important to uh, to do the selection or not? Like selecting who is who you add, who you, add, who you accept. Okay, uh, let, let me answer on two steps. Who do I add? Yes, I am very precise about who am I adding because it should be uh, relevant and useful to me as well as to him. So I always. Uh, send invitations to people that I learn from or maybe I can do something useful for them. The other way around is not. I always accept 
uh, invitations from strangers unless there is something really strange about this stranger. I always check their profile as long as I just said uh, this guy or this lady does not look like a terrorist or something weird, then most probably I can accept. If the guy is like uh, with the skin, with the knife in his face and you know stabbing you with something, or this account looks like it's really not useful, the guy is not in the same field. Any, unless you have a valid reason, do not accept it. But generally, the default is I accept all strangers unless I have a valid reason. I think this might answer the question, Yafa. Yeah, Thank you so much. It's perfectly answering what I wanted to, to know because. I really would like, I'm, I'm very fond of LinkedIn. Really, really, it helped me a lot personally and a lot of things. So I really advise everyone to have a LinkedIn account, to know very well how to use the LinkedIn account because it's very important. It's magic. And that's so just... if anybody else have some idea, some questions, they can ask it right now uh, concerning this topic. Or you can raise your hand if you want to, guys. <laughs> I always say if there's no question, then everything is super clear and quite clear. And then people would be like uh, super boosting their LinkedIn profiles. I hope this is the this is the situation. Definitely. Well, there is uh, Habib said already. Thank you, Fadi, for your very informative and insightful. Yeah, thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure. And again, I always invite everyone to the, the, the maximum you can spend over LinkedIn, the more doors it, it will open. It's, it's like magic. It's like the best return on investment for your time. And I can confirm this for the last 10 years of my life. I opened a company. I got some clients for the company, for myself. Even I switched to teaching at the American University in Cairo from, from that LinkedIn and through my connection. So building a decent network of professionals in the same field and always talking to them, it's the best investment you can do for your time and your career as well. Thank you so much, Fedzi, once again. And guys, we shared with you our Facebook uh, group. You're welcome to join. Um, and yeah, thank you so much. Just keep Th to tell Thank you so time. much also, Fedzi. Thank you for coming. And we'd like to host you another time with us. And for percent right now, it's an interesting session. It's always a pleasure, and I wonder if uh, uh, we can do what you just asked for. If can people open their cameras so that we have a group photo? Yeah, I mean, in physical classes, we do a group photo, and we do that online if you would like. Come on, guys, we can do a video. We only have high resolution. Only low is an active value, but maybe other people can be uh, more ready for the camera, which is fine. But if anyone can be ready for the camera, it's always interesting to have like a group photo. So we have. Uh, we have several people, but uh, I think no one is ready for the camera. Just for the group photo. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so thank you again, guys. Thank you for attending. And please join our Facebook group. And Fedzi, we keep in touch. And uh, you're welcome again to Tunis or to, to anywhere. You know, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. If you come to Germany, 